In the summer of 1979, I was an 8th grader living in Hialeah, Florida with my father who had been divorced from my mother since I was 5 years old. I started experimenting with drugs, alcohol, and premarital sex and quickly found myself in trouble. I got suspended from school three times for fighting in my ninth grade year. My father found 42 marijuana plants on our roof and finally I got arrested for possession. In an effort to keep my mind off drugs and alcohol, my mom got me involved in motocross racing. There was a guy at the track I'll never forget. He wore a big cross on his jersey which had Team Jesus written on it. And this guy did a devotional service at the track where he preached the word of God and he offered to pray for riders. And even though I wasn't a Christian at the time, and I didn't think I had any interest in God, for some reason I'd go to his devotionals and listen to what he had to say. During the off-seasons of motocross while still in high school in Knoxville, Tennessee, I started singing in a rock and roll band. I caught the dream and wanted to be a rock star, so when I graduated at age 17, I packed my stuff and moved to New York to chase my dream. So after New York chewed me up and spit me out, I was really searching. I turned to sports for fulfillment. I quit drinking, smoking, doing drugs, and even quit having sex, all on my own strength in an effort to find myself. 
Oddly enough, however, I started working in a strip club as a DJ, despite the fact that I was clean, sober, and celibate. I made a bunch of money, and I pretty much did whatever I wanted in life, but I still felt empty. Thankfully, sensing that God was trying to get my attention, my stepfather Ron told me about the saving grace of God through his son Jesus. I asked Christ to come into my life and to live in my heart and accepted him as my Lord and Savior at age 27. I immediately started racing jet skis in 1994 and as I was watching pro watercraft racing on ESPN2, one particular pro racer captivated me. He was awesome. But every time he got on the podium, he was arrogant and boisterous and not humble. I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and impressed upon me how great a witness this guy would be if he would just use his talents to glorify God instead of talking about himself all the time. At that moment, I believe the Holy Spirit told me to reach that kid. Amazing, because I had just started racing at the time and was far from being a pro. But through my faith, through my prayers, and the support of my friends and families and people at my church, I started Team Faith Racing Ministry. I designed the familiar oval logo, which at that time was purple, gold, and silver. I put a huge cross on my jet ski and came up with the slogan, Victory for Jesus, Glory for God. I started going to local and regional jet ski events, offering a prayer at the riders' meeting, and just trying to lead by example in an effort to glorify God with my racing all the while remembering that guy at the motocross races from Team Jesus. A mere one year later, I found myself at the World Finals of Watercraft Racing in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, the biggest event for personal watercraft racing. And I was the spiritual leader, praying for 800 riders representing 32 countries. Knowing that the pro racer whom God called me to reach would be there, I was extremely nervous when Pro Day came and it was my turn to pray. To my chagrin, everyone filed out after I said amen, but one guy stayed to tell me how much my being there meant to him. You guessed it, it was that pro racer. After I explained to him how I felt that God had told me to reach him, after we had cried and hugged each other, we became friends. And that was the start of me going to pro nationals as the chaplain. The highlight of the weekend had to be when that pro racer and I got baptized in a pool right there in Lake Havasu City. Since then I've been traveling to the National Pro Watercraft Tour teaching and preaching the Word of God. In the year 2000, after three long years of prayer, I finally went full time into ministry attending the National Arena Cross Series during the winter months. In May of 2001, I started living in a bus in an effort to totally make myself available for God to use whenever, wherever He wants to use me.